Well, good morning, everybody. Jeff Slakey and Spencer Hughes on the Daybreak Show. And via Zoom video conference, we're going to have a fun conversation catching up with Mason County PUD3. We have Lynn Eaton, Joel Meyer, and Justin Holsgrove all on the line via Zoom. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is fun to do these uh, conversations uh, in the midst of coronavirus, uh, being able to connect with everybody, and, and good to see you guys. Got a lot of updates. Uh, first, let's start with what's going on and how the response has been to the rollout of the additional Wi-Fi areas across uh, the county. I know uh, Chris Reichdahl from the superintendent of the state's schools was very positive on, on, on some of the things you guys were doing. Yeah, very much so. Uh, I have a quote from uh, Superintendent Reichdahl that I'd like to read. It's just this great quote, and we really stand behind it uh, wholeheartedly. It's really well said. So if, if I may. You may. Okay. <clears throat> from the seeds of crisis come the strong roots and blossoms of innovation. If there's anyone today who does not see telecom and connectivity as an essential utility, much like water and clean air, then I would challenge them to think about our history. Right now, we must sow the seeds of complete innovation in connectivity for families. It is the way we will learn. It is the way of the future. Geez, it's almost like uh, you could have hired Chris Reichel to write your mission statement almost. I mean, that ties great with what the PUD does. Yeah, absolutely does. It, it harkens back to the rural electrification, you know, back in the early part of last century. Yeah. And, uh, it really, really rings true for us. So we took those words. Um, he, he tacked that on and said, if you're a telecom provider or the ability to solve this problem, hurry up and solve it. And so uh, we took those words to heart. And then uh, the state broadband office under Department of Commerce, Russ Elliott, uh, he reached out to us and said, Mason PUD3, you guys are always solving these problems. Um, what can you do to, to take Mason, the worry of Mason County off his plate so that he can focus on the rest of the state? And so uh, we jumped into action and uh, worked with our community partners, uh, the Granges, fire halls, schools, uh, parks, Mason County, uh, and set up uh, locations throughout the county of Wi-Fi access hotspots so that people can drive up, um, connect to super fast Wi-Fi powered by PUD fiber, um, take care of whatever internet needs that they, they need to, you know, stay in your car for social distancing, mm -hmm. of course, and then, and then drive off. And um, we've got 22 of our 24 plus sites uh, up and running right now, and uh, they're all across Mason County. Um, and, and we have seen incredible usage. I have a couple of stats for you, if that's all Please. right. Please, yeah, no, that's great. Okay, in just about four weeks, we've had them up for about four weeks or so, we've had uh, over 1,300 unique users uh, on these sites. Uh, we have had uh, one and a half terabytes of data transferred, which is a lot, mean, meaning they're being used a lot. Um, and we've heard a lot of really great positive comments. One, uh, my favorite one is, um, a user out in the Matlock, uh, at the Matlock Grange site, um, she wrote in and said that she used this Wi-Fi hotspot to up, upload her final college assignment. And so she's, she's going to complete college and graduate uh, using <clears throat> the PUD Wi-Fi hotspot. It's just everything that we wanted it to be, everything that Superintendent Reichdahl mentioned is happening with them, and that's really exciting. I know that you guys have had uh, mobile Wi-Fi uh, units that you roll out to Oyster Fest and other events. Um, so you, were you guys ready to do this? Was this a, a thought that eventually we're going to do this um, and coronavirus kind of just pushed that timeline forward? You know, <clears throat> it really wasn't. We do have, <clears throat> excuse me, we do have that wireless on wheels, we call it the WOW unit, um, that we do take to these events to uh, support community events and also demonstrate the power of PUD fiber, um, which gave us a lot of experience on setting up uh, utility grade Wi-Fi networks, but we really didn't have this on, on the roadmap. Um, it, it was something that we heard a need and we said, we can fill that need. So we pivoted and, and made it happen. And I'm, I'm pretty impressed with how it's turned out. The, uh, Wi-Fi hotspots have uh, incredible um, uh, speed on them, so that's about 300 feet of, uh, of, of range, and the further you are UA, um, the slower your speeds are, but if you're right close to that uh, Wi-Fi access point, you're looking at 300 megabits per second down, 300 megabits per second up, anywhere around there, 
that's that's really good that's, for pretty good that's pretty good Wi-Fi. um and uh, and so these are actually going to stay in place uh for the long term um you know the infrastructure is there we have site access agreements with all of the um, locations and really it's to the benefit of our community first but it's also to the benefit of the PUD you know so much uh, all of our um, connectivity back to the main network to see what the system status is to see outage updates to get information for our crews and our engineers out into the field uh, you know we don't have good cell co coverage here in some areas of Mason County but now we have this Wi-Fi network where crews can roll up to these sites get the information they need and then carry on with their job, whether that's outage response or, or construction or whatever they're working on. And some so, of the cell phones these days have the Wi-Fi calling capabilities too. Absolutely. That's yeah. awesome. That's great. Lynn, let's bring you into the conversation and just talk about PUD3 uh, in general, how uh, the staff has been through the last couple of months, uh, the different safety measures that you guys have put in place, both uh, at your locations with the addition to that payment center downtown, um, the out, outdoor payment center, and then just the work that you guys have done to make sure all of uh, the folks that are out in the front lines are, are being protected. Sure. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of, you know, a lot of work up front, just really, you know, putting safety of our employees and safety of our customers uh, first. And so as many employees that can work from home are, and, you know, our wife or our why our, our PUD fiber came in handy there, getting um, employees connected with secure, fast internet um, and connection back to our servers. Um, and then for our crews, you know, initially we went, we did a split shift so that we could keep them separated from each other um, and still have a healthy crew um, available to respond to any emergencies. Um, since we've moved to phase two, we've actually brought them back to, um, they're all working, um, but they're working staggered shifts now. So they aren't all starting at the same time to kind of avoid that, you know, um, just help with that social distancing. We do have some employees working in the office, um, but they, and they're, and they're following the masking protocols as our crews are. Um, those are new this week. Um, and then for our customers, you know, we really were concerned about our customers who who need to come into the office. You know, they either don't have the technology, which part of those Wi-Fi hotspots help with that too, or um, you know, maybe there's a language barrier, or maybe there's um, other reasons that they need to come to the office. So the kiosks were um, really good timing for that. We have one at our downtown payment center in Shelton, and then we have one at our Belfair warehouse. So we're trying to cover, you know, both sides of the county for um, people who need to pay with cash or have other needs. And then we're just extend, we're just working hard to find other ways to be there for our customers without opening our doors. And, um, you know, a lot of that's gonna, we're just, the regulations are changing every day. And so we're, we're trying to just stay on top of that and stay safe at the same time. Joel, we're starting to move into uh, election season, as you know, and at the end of election season, we uh, will have our legislators back in Olympia. What are some of the things the PUD3 is looking at to um, impress upon not only the folks in the 35th, our representatives, but across the state on different ways that the PUD is, is working well with community or utilizing uh, renewable uh, energy even more? Uh, what are you guys thinking to to uh, advocate for this upcoming session? There, well, there are a number of things that are probably continuations from the, the last session. Uh, the first is to make sure that uh, the requirements that we have for our clean energy future uh, uh, don't hurt our customers as, as we move forward. That's a very important thing there. I think uh, one of the things circling back to the telecommunications uh, discussion is that uh, I, I think that public utility districts really stepped up. Uh, 14 of us provide uh, telecommunication services on a wholesale basis. And uh, I think that we proved, especially PUD3 proved, uh, that we're great partners in, an, in a moment's notice to be a part of a solution. Uh, I, here, the interesting little stat, of the 14 public utility districts that provide broadband, PUD3 has set up 24% of all the hotspots set up by PUDs in the state. Uh, and 
I think that's a, a testament to not only uh, Justin's department and, and the work that, that his folks have been doing, uh, but also uh, the, the fact that, uh, that we're prepared for things. Uh, Lynn was talking about some of the efforts that we've taken in regards to uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, response, but in our disaster plan, I mean, I call it a disaster plan, and technically it's our business continuity plan, but there's a portion of that that is a pandemic response uh, a plan in it. And we were able to, to start moving relatively quickly uh, because we had those things in place. Uh, but I, I think for, as far as the legislature is concerned, at first, do no harm. That's the big thing right there. But second of all, if you have, have partnerships to uh, face the new rural electrification, which is broadband, we're the partner you need. And, and you should be opening up opportunities for us and our, and our business partners in the, util in the community to do that. Justin, let's uh, circle back to another fun uh, thing that you guys are keeping your eyes on. It's the Osprey Cam. Uh, I am understanding we've got some eggs and things like that. Well, yes, that's exactly right. So uh, in at the beginning of May, uh, end of April, uh, the osprey pair laid three eggs, which is more than the normal uh, brood size, I guess you could say. Uh, normally they, two, they lay two eggs, but um, Penny, the female osprey as we've named her, uh, laid three eggs. And just a couple days ago, two of them have hatched. I'm sure the third one's on its way soon. And uh, they, if you need a, a bright ray of sunshine, uh, just log into the Osprey camera, pud3.org slash Osprey. And uh, we've got two cameras and one of them looks down on the, on the nest. And those little Osprey chicks are the cutest thing. Uh, they look fluffy, uh, you know, um, who would have known? I, I guess if you know about birds, you know, but uh, they're just super cute. And uh, we're really excited to watch them grow. Uh, Penny and Griffin, Griffin is the male, uh, named after uh, famous Seahawks, of course, or yes, Sean Penny, of course. Shaquille Griffin. Um, and, uh, and so they're just, they're just really, really fun to, to keep an eye on and check in on throughout the day. Um, they, they've done a great job uh, parenting, if you will. Well, I know that the PUD3 works tirelessly to keep the, the all of Mason County connected uh, as best as it can. And, you know, in my time at the radio station over the years, it is, I've seen, you know, marked improvements year over year on the power uh, in downtown Shelton. And very rarely now, you know, is there any sorts of issues? And, and that's a great testament to all the hard work that you, the crew does and everybody at, at PUD3. Joel Meyer, Lynn Eaton, Justin Holsgrove, great to connect with you on this and talk with you and get some good updates on what's happening at the PUD3. We'll put all the links to this, of course, in the show notes. And, and uh, you guys have a great, great day and, and we'll catch up again soon.